So today we're going to talk about how to actually master the seven day organic marketing sprint. And some of you guys are like, well, it actually took me 10 or 11 days to go through it. That's okay. The more repetition and the, the more that you do it, the faster you're going to get and the more results you're going to get. Because I always tell my students in my Lean on Laurel program is I am helping you rig the game to win all the time, no matter the, you know, however the, the advertising platform is, whether other people are getting results, I'm wanting to help you guys rig the game to win. For those of you guys who don't know, I have a television background. If you watch the seven day organic marketing sprint and you saw some of my, the, the work and what, where I came up with some of my strategies, but you have to kind of think about this. When people come to me and they're like, Laurel, Facebook ads don't work. I'm like, I have to laugh and say, what are you talking about? Are you like all Facebook ads are is organic content with money on it, right? So if Facebook advertising doesn't work, that means television doesn't work. That means radio ads don't work, right? We're I see a couple of you guys laughing, but really that is how ridiculous people sound when they're like, well, Facebook ads don't work. All we're doing, all the, all the Facebook ads platform or YouTube, whatever advertising platform it is, is saying, hey, here's a piece of content. I want, I'm gonna pay you $5 and I want you to put this piece of content in front of that audience. If it doesn't work, is it the platform's fault? No, it did what you literally told it to do. It's a machine. <laughs> I always laugh, like, like people say, well, Facebook out, is out to take my money. No, it's not. It's literally a tool to deliver your content to an audience that you chose. You chose the content, you chose the audience, and you just told a machine to put this piece of content in front of this person. That's it, okay? And so how do I rig the game to win for my students and for my clients, okay? We touched on it inside the seven-day organic marketing sprint, and we have to dig a little bit deeper, okay? We have to dig a little bit deeper. Pipeline equity, okay? This is something that a lot of people, a lot of people don't understand because we have to have balance, right? Today, you're here to learn how to turbocharge what we did with the organic marketing sprint by utilizing ads. We want to accelerate the process, right? We talk about in the very first video, how do we solve our solvable problem, right? First, we need to do it with the least amount of risk, right? That is why I show you guys the fundamentals inside the organic marketing sprint, because for most people, that is the least amount of risk. If you, if you only have a certain amount of money that's coming in every single month, do you think it's a wise choice to go and, and spend it on ads? It's like playing the lottery. You don't know if your content's gonna work. The reason that I show you guys this is because it's the least amount of risk. Once we have this dialed in, then we go with less effort. Now we take what we've already done, right? Organic, take what we've already done. Think about this, right? Going back to that student that was like, that got her first client, all she was doing posting power content, had a value bomb that people were commenting for. She used my script, moved them over to Messenger, booked a couple of calls and got her very first client. All we're gonna do is take that winning piece of content and say, huh, you know what? That worked really well. These five other videos didn't work as well. So I'm gonna take this piece of content that works really well and I'm going to save time. And I'm just going to pay Facebook $5 a day to put this in front of more people. It's already proven to work. Let's just put it in front of more people. That's how we step into less effort. Think about this. Think about this. If we have a value bomb, I'll just, I'll just use an example. So I helped one of my students create a value bomb 
for um, MSPs who are selling their IT services to business to uh, small businesses like brick and mortar businesses. I was like, create a starter kit that has a checklist of everything that they need to do in order to make sure that their data is safe. Make a video how to do it. Use that as your value bomb, right? Do your power content. People comment for it. They go to Messenger. She does it for several weeks, hypothetically, right? Several weeks. She books a couple of calls. She's like, wow, that works really, really well. But then she's like, you know what? I don't feel like having all of these conversations. Like I, the volume is too big. What has she already built? What has she already built and validated? Does anyone know? I know Victor knows because Victor's been with me for a while. But what has she built? No one knows? Yeah, she's built a warm audience, but Charles Close, proof of concept. She's already built a lead gen funnel without buying any click funnels, right? Now she can go and build a funnel that everyone, the, 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 the funnel that everyone wants, right? But how many of you guys went and built a funnel first before you even validate an offer? You're like, I'm gonna offer this lead magnet, I'm gonna run ads to this, I'm gonna see if it works, right? I like doing things the opposite way. I like starting from the back of the funnel, selling an offer, and then working my way to the front. What a lot of people do, I'll, I'll break it down even simpler, right? What most people are doing is they're trying to fill a bucket, right? And what they're doing, because this is what they're trying to do, is they're like, I'm gonna drive a huge amount of traffic to this offer and I'm gonna see if anyone's gonna buy, but yet this offer has all these holes, right? And all they're essentially doing is pouring water into this bucket and all of this, all of that money that they're, that they're spending on traffic is going through all of those holes. This is what a lot of experts are teaching you guys how to do. And that is why so many people waste money on Facebook ads. Because they're like, just get a bunch of traffic and validate, take them through a webinar, take them through this, take them through that. When really, if you can sell this offer, make it better, because your audience will tell you what they, what they want, fix all the holes, right? Get great conversion percentages on this. Now we can send traffic to an offer that is working, is keeping people. I see so many people that try to set up a, a membership like mine, like the $7 membership. But a lot of people don't understand, I sold it 400 times organically before I ran ads to it. Why did I do that? I wanted to fix the holes in it and see what my retention was with my warm audience. Because you think if I, you, you don't think if like, I can't keep my warm audience, engaged in a membership, what the hell do you think is gonna happen when I pay Facebook for people coming into my membership, right? Does that make sense? Is this starting to like kind of make sense as to why like I do things a little bit different? I don't know. That's the way that my brain works is like, let's build something, make it awesome. Sell it over and over again to the people who know, like, and trust me, right? You guys ever heard the, the term simple scales? Fancy fails. I love that. I love that quote. I don't know who first said that quote, but I freaking love it because it's so true. Like people come to me all the time. They're like, Laurel, but I'm not techie. Guys, I'm not techie. My wife bought me an, an iPad, my first iPad the other day, and I'm still freaking writing things on a freaking piece of paper. I'm not techie, but I am really good at understanding this. Whenever people, whenever people are doing ads, they're just throwing sales messages in front of people. That's all it is. They're throwing sales messages in front of people. What we want to do is we want to have a balance of goodwill 
and sales, right? If we don't have any sales messages, we're not going to sell anything, right? But what a lot of people are doing with ads is they're just consistently putting out a sales message all the time. Buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. So if we had, if we were looking at like a, a bar, right? It's mostly sales and maybe they're like, oh, I do TikToks. I laugh, I do TikToks. So many people are trying to, this is, this is just my, my vision of what TikTok is. I think short videos, like 60 second videos are a scaling mechanism, not a conversion mechanism. Like a lot of people want to shortcut doing the work with 60 second videos. You cannot convince people with a 60 second video that you're an expert, I'm sorry, you can't. 60 second videos are useful in brand awareness and scaling and nurturing an audience, but it will not convince people to buy your high ticket thing. It's just another tool to get your message in front of people. We need to have more goodwill. And so what I'm showing you guys how to do, right? Because we're here to learn how to turbocharge what we're already doing. What we want to do is we want our pipeline equity to look more like this. A lot of people are like, well, Laurel, I don't understand how your power content ads fit into, like, why are you running ads to something that doesn't have a link? It's still, we're able to make sales with goodwill content, right? Because think about the way your power content ads are, right? Your power content ads are just pieces of video that have no links in it. Doesn't look like an ad, right? Stealth, everyone knows what stealth means, right? Flying in under the radar. It's an ad that literally looks like a piece of really valuable content, which it is, right? Think about your, your piece of power content, right? You have your video, you have your headline, your promise of value, and your CTA, right? So when people, when people see this in the newsfeed, it has no link. It's just a video that has, you know, um, want to book more discovery calls? Don't use this funnel. Give me the next five minutes and I'm going to show you why the most common sales funnel doesn't work. And by the way, just for watching this video, drop a line below. I will give you the funnel that my agency clients are using. If you're trying to book calls, what are you going to do? Think about this as its own funnel, right? We were talking about clickety click funnels a while ago. Power content is essentially a funnel. It is a funnel. The headlines job has, it has one job, to get people's attention to stop the scroll. The promise of values job is to get people to watch the video. The video's job is to give you authority. The CTA's job is to get people to say, I want to talk to you. I want that thing that you just told me I could have. So we're building goodwill while being able to move people to the sales without being, look at me, buy my thing, buy my thing, buy my thing. This strategy, I'm going to, I'm totally going to give credit where credit is due. Like, the headline promise of value, that's something I, I came up with myself whenever as you guys heard the story, getting people to watch 11 o'clock news. But the concept of applying it to what we're doing here, one of the very first books I ever read whenever I came into the online marketing space was uh, Gary Vaynerchuk's uh, Jab, 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 Right Hook. Where do you think I got three pieces of power content top of funnel? Jab, jab, jab. Makes sense, right? This is how we rig the game to win. Victor right there, he's in my Lean on Laurel program. 
freaking rock star, like master at freaking like implementing. Victor, how 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 many calls do we book with these five dollar ads? Like we run a five dollar ad to this, okay? All the setups in the in the seven dollar program. We don't need to go over setups. We I've done, I'm tired of doing showing you guys how to do setups. It's all there. It's all there, right? You could do that. You can execute this in two ways. Both highly effective. As a matter of fact, I actually would tell you like to test it two ways. But again, remember. We're validating it through our organ the organic stuff, right? So by the time we get to ads, we should already have one or two videos that people are asking for the thing. Now, again, remember, less risk, then less effort, right? Some of you guys have an ad budget and you're like, you know what, I wanna accelerate the process, cool. You can do it with less effort. You could skip the organic part of it but do not skip the organic content because why? Ads are just organic content with money on it, right? So even if you're not doing any organic stuff, you are my friend, ads are just organic content with money on it. So a lot of people are like, well, I don't wanna watch the organic thing. I'm, I, I just wanna do paid ads. Well, if you don't understand how to create content, your ads ain't gonna work. So this little small percentage of, of ads, that's gonna be like your power offer, right? It's one of the first things I have you guys work on when you come into the program. And then what are we gonna use as retargeting? More goodwill power content. But this time we can add a button because we built, we're building up that goodwill through other pieces of content. We're combining the two. So if we were to do this as a $5 ad, we could do it two ways. We could do this as a video view campaign. Some of my clients over the last several months were like, Laurel, I don't think my, my, my people like raising their hand for stuff in comments. I was like, okay, strategy is still the same. We're just gonna change a little tactic. We're gonna run it as a messenger campaign instead. So people can just click the messenger button and have the, the message directly with you. So I always tell people run it both ways. Split $5 on a video view campaign and $5 on a messenger campaign. See what fills your solvable problem. Lori just asked a really good question. When we're doing power content organically, do we do all five videos in the first bucket first and then move on to the next bucket or do we mix and match from different buckets and do daily videos? Great freaking question. It doesn't matter. Does not matter. What I do, you guys can't see, but I've got a whole bunch of post-it notes right here on my, on my wall. Every day I walk in, I grab my morning drink, I take one off the wall and I shoot it. I don't worry about any order or anything, but that's literally how I built my $7 program. I just took all of my Facebook lives, all my value bombs and threw them in a membership. <clears throat> Too many people overthink like all of this stuff. People are like, well, Laurel, if I give away the form, no one's gonna buy my program. If that were true, I wouldn't have had 6,000 people buy my set. We've had 6,000 people buy the $7 program over the last four and a half years. And I always had, my lean on Laurel's always full. People buy my $7 a month pro program. People buy my $1,000 a month program. People log in and lean on Laurel and they're like, oh, this is content I've already seen. I'm like, yes, because lean on Laurel is not a, I'm going to sit, Victor will tell you, lean on Laurel is not a, I'm going to show you a whole bunch of videos. It's <laughs> Laurel's going to kick my ass to implement the videos that you've already watched in the $7 program. 
<laughs> he says, yep. Like I got a call with, 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 with the, we, we start, we kick up the first cohort today. People are like, oh, well, Laurel, I'm not ready to run ads. You know, it's the first thing we're gonna work on and lean on Laurel. Because if my students don't have a messenger conversation worth having, if they don't know how to get people to raise their hand for a piece of content, if they can't get the conversations going organically, we in trouble when we run ads, right? So we do three parts. We do the organic, and, and think about this, right? Because what happened a lot this year, Facebook decided a lot of you guys, it didn't want you running ads. And so what I make sure my students have in place is an organic client acquisition system, a Facebook client acquit paid ads on Facebook because Facebook is still the easiest platform to run ads on. I don't care what anyone says, I've tested them all. Facebook is still by far the most superior and the easiest to run ads for. That is why a lot of people recommend Facebook ads, starting with Facebook ads. People are like, well, YouTube ads. Yes, YouTube ads is a great platform to scale. Think about all of the information that Google has. It takes a long time to optimize that. And you have to have a big, you have to have a bigger budget unless, unless you're running power content on YouTube. I run, I run my power content on YouTube. I showed you guys what I do. You can take this same concept, do it on LinkedIn. I have one student who just loves LinkedIn and guess what? She gets better results doing the exact same thing on LinkedIn. We run our power content on LinkedIn. She has the conversations. She runs her retargeting. So the first thing we do, we run the organic stuff. Or if you just wanna do the ads and you have the money, that's okay too. I prefer that other people have a, an organic client acquisition because what if Facebook says, eh, don't want you running ads anymore, right? We wanna have something else. But the third level of protection is my client accelerator ecosystem that is ran across multiple platforms like TikTok and all of those fun stuff. So we start, there's three phases. One, organic client acquisition. Two, we turbocharge the client acquisition. And number three, we create a secondary platform that will do the exact same thing so that, right? Because if I'm running $5 ads here, of course you can't do the messenger thing on, on YouTube, but you can do the, the two-step on, on YouTube. I have a video that walks through how to do that. If you have your $5 ads that are getting traction on Facebook, and then you have your YouTube ads that are getting traction on YouTube. People are asking for your value bomb. You're rigging the game no matter what. Like Facebook shuts down your, but remember that one day last November, was it last November? Facebook and Instagram went down and the whole world just was like, <laughs> I forgot. It was a whole day. I was still bringing in new members into the $7 program through my YouTube ads and through my client acquisition channel on organic. It was a fun day, Victor. I actually went and sat on the freaking beach and let my systems do the work for me. Yep, that's what it, Dr. Sabah, am I saying you're right, your name right? I know you and I were chatting this, this weekend about getting you into Lean on Laurel. Um, if, you, if you have the money, and you want to you test, you have to be okay with be, it being a test though, right? That's the thing that I always tell people. You have to be okay. If you don't want to go the organic route, you have to be okay. <laughs> Actually, the example that I give my students or prospects is like, if you want to go straight to paid ads, you have to be okay with literally putting money in a knapsack and throwing it in the backyard, lighting it on fire and being totally okay with it. She's taking her head, yeah. So she's she's cool with that. Like, and some people budget for it, and that's okay. That's fine. Like most of my agency clients, honestly, this stuff is done by VAs. Like they hire people to do this. You guys ever ever see Cole Gordon's ads? Anyone anyone ever see Cole Gordon's ads? What is, what is his promise? Like we we'll put setters in, into your business, and we can guarantee thirty to forty x return on ad spend. 
people, people think that they're getting 30 to 40 X return on ad spend on a webinar funnel. They're using a client acquisition system where literally they're getting people to opt in to watch a video, a VSL. They have setters calling those people three times a day and one time for the next seven days. That is how they can get results. And it's funny, I wanna say it was Brian Mercata who said this. And I was like, yep, this is completely true. And this is why over the last four and a half years, if you go back, guys, I've been doing this same strategy, four and a half years. I started my business, my online business, April of 2018. I'm going on five years now, my business. Same strategy. It has not changed. Tactical, it has not changed. Why? And people used to laugh at me. At, like I, I lost clients over this because they would go to something like Funnel Hacking Live and hear from all of these experts that Laurel is wasting your money on ads. Like you should be running conversion campaigns and all of this stuff, right? It's all come full circle. Now, some of the top people are using strategies just like this, selling it to you guys for thousands and thousands of dollars when it's something I've been teaching for free over the last several years. Does this make sense? Like, it doesn't sound hard, right? It's not. It's not. It's, it's very simple, but what did we say? Simple scales, right? Did you guys, did any of you guys watch that video I did on, um, let's see if I, if I go to my profile. Did you guys check this video out? How many of you guys have seen this video? What should your cost per lead be over the last few days? I've done several ad audits with prospects on the main mistake to see if people are turning off what could be profitable ads, but they're basing their CPL on what experts say it should be, not what the numbers say it should be. Let's do some math. I had so many people like message me after seeing that video. They're like, what the hell am I doing running a webinar? I can't afford it. I'm like, yeah, most people can't afford to run a webinar. They freak out if their webinar leads are like 20 or $30 when a lot of people won't tell you that's perfectly normal. And then you need 500 leads to test a funnel. 500 times 20, let's say, let's even just say you're spending, let's even just say $10 a lead. That's $5,000 just to test. A lot of people like $5,000 to some people is just a drop in the bucket it's still a lot of freaking money that a lot of people can't afford, like when they're starting their business, right? And so that's why whenever I was creating these ad strategies, I'm like trying to figure out how can I make myself stand out from all of these other ad experts. I took on the challenge to create a low budget strategy that worked the same, if not better than all of the, the stuff that everyone else was teaching. In the organic marketing sprint, what did I tell you guys? You have to find a gap in your marketplace and find what is missing among all your competitors and do that and rock it. Be completely okay with it, right? I went very niche. $5 ads, that's what people, that's what people know me for, my $5 ad strategy. Can I do? Yes, I've got my, all of my agency clients spend obviously more than $5 a day. But if I can do a $5 a day strategy and make and help students like you guys get a six figure business. What do you think I could do to someone that has a lot of ad budget? That's why my ecosystem works so well. Like when my agency clients, like whenever we taught them how to do this and get a VA to take on the work, that's how we're still able to have a high return on ad spend. Even though Facebook ads, Lanita and I talk about this all the time. Ad costs are not getting any cheaper. As a matter of fact, they're going up. This is how you maintain your ad spend. Otherwise, the people who aren't learning how to have conversations within their funnel, like days of automation, guys, I'm going to be bold in saying this, all of those people who have, have automated funnels are going to have big trouble 
2023. They may say it's automated, but if they don't have a place to have conversations with their leads within the first seven days, those leads are as good as gone. And it doesn't matter whether you have like Lanita, she's got a burl she she runs burlesque shows all over the country. I love event events. But some of the main things that you have to figure out how to do is keep your current customers engaged so that they not come to one show but come to many shows, right? You want to break even on that first. That's what a lot of people don't tell people. Ad costs are going up. Like right now, on average, if you have like a low ticket offer, let's say you have a $30, $37 offer. You can expect to spend $70 to $80 to acquire that one $37. It's what happens on the back end, right? That's why a lot of e-commerce businesses, they fold in the first couple of months because a lot of them don't understand how to build an upsell system within their e-commerce funnel. They don't want to break even on that first product, but that's the reality. Like all, like Facebook ads are still the cheapest ad platform to run ads on, but still, it's it's expensive to acquire a customer if you have not built this up. Like me, I've been building this for four and a half years. People laugh and they're like, "How are you doing this?" I'm like, "I've been telling you guys for four and a half years how I'm doing this. You cannot re replicate these results unless you follow my strategy." I did this all organically for nine months. If I knew then what I know now, I would have spent $5 a day to accelerate my results. You guys don't have to wait nine months. Like if you follow this and a $5 ad strategy, you're going to get to where you want to be a lot faster than I did. It took me nine months. But, it, but in the in the grand scheme of things, it did take me long, right? April, I started my business April of 2018. By November, by the time I launched this $7 offer, I had already booked out my agency and my high ticket program by November. I launched my $7 program Black Friday of 2018. All organically doing this, not a, not a dime in Facebook advertising. As a matter of fact, I am almost to my second seven figures and I still have not spent $100,000 in ads. I got to my very first seven figures with less than $40,000 in ad spend. Every single person in this room can do this, but you have to get good at not pushing the buttons. You guys are all, you guys could all probably push the button better than I can, trust me. You have to get good at this. That is why the people that join Lean on Laurel, they're not joining to learn how to do ads. They're here for me to help them fix their conversations. Like we, I have one of my students, Liz, brilliant, brilliant robotics. And she's teaching people how to go from their engineering background into robotics, a six-figure robotics uh, with a $10,000 sign-in bonus, sign-up bonus. She had been putting out content. She had a really good funnel. She was getting people into her funnel, but she couldn't get anyone to actually buy. I just took a look at her funnel and I was like, well, you have, you're doing a list building funnel. Let's change that. Let's do a sales funnel so that people opt in to actually, people who are opting in actually know that they're about to be sold to, right? That's what a VSL is. And then let's put a fr another friction point before you get on the call so that you're only getting on the call with people who already know your price. They already know what you're going to sell them. Her and I have this like little secret thing when, when uh, she hadn't sold anything in five years and she joined Lean on Laurel in October. And we finally got everything dialed in. And now her, her nice thing is um, every time she makes a sale, by the way, $10,000 sale, she sends me a little bacon emoji. It's really cool. But it took us 
about a month and a half to try to figure out like where was the where's the black hole what do we need to fix it's like one little thing and so many people don't have the patience to be able to to wait out the strategy right like what what was the very first thing i said in the organic marketing sprint it's not 90 days to results it's 90 days to get the data that we need to know what to fix so that we can move things forward does that make sense does anyone have does anyone have any questions You guys can unmute. Yeah, you guys, whoever has a question, you can unmute yourself. We have about 10 minutes until I have to. Hi, I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, absolutely. Uh, how you doing? Good morning. Happy New Year. Happy New Year. So I will, I will take accountability. I was one of the ones that was going on a rant about the long videos <laughs> uh, because I come from another academy that was just for um, musicians and podcasts and our content was chopped up. Um, the question, the question I have is, I'm very good at running Facebook ads. My question is, I have a piece of power content I've been running for about a month and a half, and I have great traction on it. I have about, let's say, about fifteen thousand of a hundred percent views on it. Should and should I consider that a warm audience? But should I run another piece of power content to them? for maybe another month or so before I go and ask them to go and subscribe to my YouTube channel? Or should I just go straight to the offer and say, hey, you guys watch this 100% of this video? You know, I would like you to subscribe. Is it too early to well, kind of- Yeah, don't tell, don't tell them, hey, you watched 100% of this video. Just just give them a value, another value video with a, with a direct call to action to go subscribe yeah. to your YouTube channel. Okay, got it, got, it, got it. Like for people, like for people like, that have watched my power content on YouTube. Like I, I immediately run a retargeting video that says, you know, hey, you know, if, if you if you love watching, I forget what I said. If you if you like watching, you know, if you're trying to make ads work for your business, subscribe to my channel. I've got dozens and hundreds of videos that teach you step by step how to run ads. Blah blah blah. Subscribe to my channel. Um, I just run it as an like as a direct in stream. So, and and this is in the program. If you run your power content on YouTube, run it as an in-feed ad, not an in-stream ad. You could run your retargeting though as an in-feed ad, but the power content where you want people to actually comment, run it as an in-feed ad. Otherwise, they can't comment on the in-feed ad. I mean, on the in-stream ad, right? The in-stream yeah. ad that run in front of the video. Front of the video. Yeah, I actually, and I actually, um, I actually did that. And my my last follow-up question to that was, I was struggling so hard over this weekend. With the uh with the Google Tag Manager because I wanted to get as much data as I can use because I look at all my data on Facebook so I wanted to grab that data from Google and Facebook and have it at one place but I wanted to ask you is it really necessary because I am getting a headache with Google Tag Manager and Google Analytics I have never messed with that before and I have what are you so trying, what are you videos. using what are you using them for I mean you should use Google Analytics to see where all your traffic's coming from but where what's causing the headache the Google tag manager as far as implementing the pixel and just uh just well, then, the let's the just app. keep let's just keep things really simple today we're just talking about power content it does not require any pixel data on platform actions do not require any pixel data you do not need any gotcha. pixel. and that's why I love this strategy too Zero pixel data. If we look at this, right? I have a I have a Lean on Laurel student. She's a I, I talk about her a lot. Her name is Doreen. Literally runs this as the discovery call accelerator. So she has a messenger ad straight to her video where people ask for a junior checklist. We run it as a messenger ad. That's her power content. She's giving value. Junior checklist is her value bomb. We run another $5 ad with her power offer straight to messenger five dollars a day again no pixel data we have we are building a funnel with it and not having to rely on any pixel data guys i always have the recording for you guys stop asking me <laughs> i always have the recording this all it's all in the onboarding i'm not fussing but gosh i'm, I'm really tired of it answering that specific question <laughs> like the replay is always going to be available Who's got another one? Let me, I, I see Dr. Sabah up there. Did I say your name right? Yeah, Sabah. Sabah, okay, cool. Yeah. Um, 
So I have a question. Um, before I discovered you, um, I was working with another coach and the plan was basically to um, do a webinar and um, get them on a call, but the call is actually going to be a group sales call, which is sort of like a combination between a webinar and a sales call. Wait, are you, do are you doing Mariah Causes thing or was in her program or no? No, I'm working with Mike Merck. Okay. I was going to say, I, I, get a lot of I get a lot of Mariah's uh, and that that's kind of her strategy too. Um, I, I, don't like, her I don't like that. I don't like that strategy at all because like the cost per call is like stupid expensive. Yeah. So my, like I was listening to a lot of your content and I, because the group sales call is sort of like a webinar and a sales call at the same time, I just wanted to have like one thing to get people. So to shorten the sales cycle and not have to have them have like go through the webinar and then sign up for the call. I can just have them come to the call because my um, for my offer, there is a lot of like belief shifting and kind of pre-education that needs to happen because the strategies that are currently, um, I guess, available are not really how you grow your hair back. Um, if you're really trying to understand like at the root cause level. So that's why I like the idea of having like the group sales call with like a webinar sales call with, you know, several people. But mm -hmm. you were just saying how, um, how do you get clients into that funnel um, through power content or through your power offer? Um, if you're like, because I guess during that call, I would sort of reveal um, like how much the thing would cost then. And I guess there would be a chance of getting a lot of people on the call that maybe just want the free information. And I do have a really strong desire to help people that can't afford things, but I still want to generate money initially for the business. So I'm just wondering um, what's the best way to kind of go or to deal with that or to try and get people into that funnel that would be interested in actually having the coaching aspect. I will always tell you guys this, there is no shortcut to this. I will not lie to you and say you will get fast results. Being consistent though, right? How many of you guys, show of hands, I got a couple of my students. How many of you guys hopped into Lean on Laurel without talking to me? <laughs> Are you guys starting to get it? There is nothing fancy about what I do. I do videos, I teach my heart out, I'm consistent. I'm not even talking about a VSL right now. I don't even have a VSL. <laughs> Guys, I'm almost $2 million in and I don't have a, like, I don't even have a lead magnet. I'm doing everything that everyone tells you not to do. I'm trying to tell you guys that there is a simpler way to do this stuff. And it is just literally by showing up, like, like to your, Dr. Sabah, like to your point, right? This is kind of like a group coaching call, like a group webinar, right? Some of you guys are after this call are going to, I didn't sell y'all lean on Laurel, but there's going to be a couple of you guys that are like, right. how could I be there? So it's just like, I don't sell, I don't sell. Like I'm, I'm, I'm like, yeah. either people want in there, they don't, right? They like, and that's what I try to tell people is like, if people don't get value, people, how did, how did, how does that quote go? People look at your value based on the free content on your free content yeah. that is very true like if you put out shit content and dangle the carrot and never tell people the thing they're not gonna perceive that what's behind your paid stuff is anything better so just put out good content and then the, the right people will come because they'll be convinced by your methods and like how you're you know they'll yeah, bond with you through the video yeah, like think about this. Like if you start with this, right? <clears throat> so actually, I will invite you guys. I got a challenge for you guys. Poke holes in this strategy. Someone tell me how this would not work. If you ran value videos, right? And made an audience of people who watched 25% of this and you presented them. With content for one year. For one year, someone tell me how, like, I'm getting passionate because some of you guys, if you would have done this last year when I told y'all to, y'all would be in a different position right now. 
are you guys waiting for me to tell you a different strategy? Like, what is the, like, seriously? Someone tell me how this would not work. Let's say I do this, I make an audience of people who do 25%. I do all of these videos. Oops, I pushed the wrong button. I ran a traffic campaign instead of a video campaign. Do you think that's gonna make a difference? Oopsie, I did a reach campaign. Or oopsie, I did a, do you think it's gonna? If that video is getting people's attention, right? Right? I'll, I'll use Lenita as an example. She said, Laurel, I ain't got time to figure out how to poke holes. I need to figure out how to work it. I just showed you how to work it. But most of you guys don't have the freaking patience to do this. And that is what's gonna, guys, I'm gonna be realistic with you guys right now. 2023, the people who are doing this are gonna be around. Consistency, right? Alex Harmozy even said it. You guys, if you don't listen to me, listen to Alex Harmozy. Alex Harmozy used to poke holes in this and be like conversion, conversion, conversion. Alex Harmozy just a couple of weeks ago was like, I was wrong, guys. Getting as much content in front of people, fame is the way to grow your business. Here's the thing, though. And by the way, I got a surprise for you guys. I'll tell you guys. I want to say it's January 19th. It's cocktails and conversions in January. Does anyone know Ben McClellan? Brilliant guy. He works with Tanner Chidester, like lots of people. I'm going to show you guys the second most important part of the strategy. And a lot of you guys are going to be like, oh. He's going to come in and he's going to show you guys how to build a fulfillment funnel. So that when people come into your program, they're going to tell other people how awesome you are. There's two parts to that. Because here's the thing, we can drive all of the, the, the goodwill and value to your product, but if your product sucks and you're not getting people results, it's a leaky hole, right? And so I'm bringing in the best, like Ben McClellan is to me and my, like the best at retention. But that's, that's just retention. We're talking marketing here because I know a lot of you guys just need a strategy to bring people in. Yeah, so Richard says it works in the face-to-face -face environment when we ran, ran Fit Clubs for free and talked about the paid program and a percentage of the Fit Club members always go into the paid program. Absolutely. Like I treat my online business as if I, as if I would to anyone who walks through my office door right there. Like I'm the same person, like we host events and stuff. Like I'm the same person for you guys as I am to anyone else. I see Sonia, you got your hand up, girl. Hi, Laurel. Just a, a very simple question with the power content videos. Should yeah. I put in the, you have to excuse me, I'm, I'm really not great with Facebook stuff, the, the hashtag keywords in the comments. Hmm. Hashtag keywords, I don't use anything like that. No. Okay. So no keywords or anything like that. Just post the video in exactly this, the way that you've said. I don't. <laughs> and, the, and that's the thing is like so many of you guys get caught up in those details that don't matter. Okay. Like a lot of people will be like, oh, you need to, you know, like, like I get so many people who tell me I'm doing my YouTube videos wrong. People may, who, who make so much less money than I do tell me my YouTube videos are wrong. I'm like, cool, show me your videos with like a thousand views. How much has your YouTube channel made you, right? Like, I don't, I don't do the description. I don't do the keywords. I don't, I don't do anything that all these experts tell you to do. The only thing, guys, that I have been doing for the last four and a half years is this. That's all. Again, do you record the videos vertically, horizontally? however you want. My opinion, my opinion is this with that. My opinion is this. I find if you want to come from a place of authority, horizontal is the way to go. If you want to come from an, an, a conversation, vertically. That's, that's the way that I feel. Like if I'm having, if I want my audience to feel like I'm having a conversation, I'll shoot vertically. 
But if I want them to look at me as someone of authority, I do horizontal. But don't get lost in those details, guys. Just freaking do the videos. Don't worry about your hair. Most of my videos, I have bed head and no makeup and a shitty webcam. Like I've got all of my, look, back there, I've got all of my stuff from my television days, all my fancy lighting, all my fancy. I've got my fluorescent light on and my, my computer webcam. And guess what? These videos do better than anything nice I shoot. Just make sure your audio is okay. Most iPhones now can shoot better video than anything else. I have time for one last question. Who's got, who's got one last question before we, we take off? I just want you guys to leave here with just confidence. So just go and do it. Like, just do it. Like, there's no shortcut. There's just, just go do it. Go give value. Like I, like I challenge, like I, you know, I made the challenge to people in the, in Nina's accountability group that she, uh, that she set up, which by the way, thank you, Nina. Everyone needs to thank Nina um, and Ginger for, for doing that. Cause that was really cool to see a select group of people actually going through the sprint and seeing where they got stuck and me being able to make resources for them when they got stuck. But like I made it, I was like, look, do this for 90 days straight and see what happens. Just go get value for 90 days straight. Like one of the, one of the things that, and I'll leave you guys with this, like whenever I was, whenever I was doing my, you know, trying to build up my online business, I was, I was doing an, I was doing agencies for brick and mortar businesses. Cause a lot of you guys are like, well, how do I get clients for, you know, for an agency or whatever? Like I went and just like literally messaged 100 people of who I wanted to work with. But here's the thing. Do you think I would have landed those clients without any of this content I was doing on my profile? Think about that. Direct outreach. Just messaged 100 business owners in Phoenix, Arizona. Volume, right? Alex, Harmo Alex Harmozzi is always like, people aren't doing, uh, doing enough things to get them results. The sprint is in the, is in the program under, I forget what it's under. It's in the, uh, under the Get Ready Protocol, Organic Foundations. Awesome. I think we had a good conversation today. I was a little hard on y'all. I was a little hard on y'all, but you know what? That's what like, I'm only hard on you guys because I know the potential. I've seen that like, that, that I haven't had a student that has not made this work yet. But again, it takes that optimization, right? Because you can get them to Messenger, but if you can't close them in Messenger or you can't have the right conversation in Messenger, the strategy won't work. I have, I have so many people who will come to me and be like, I tried your strategy. It doesn't work. I'm like, in Lean on Laurel, I have my students bring their messenger conversations to an open office hour call and I go over there and I'm like, you didn't follow, like here, like if you would have done this instead of this, Peach, I'll, I'll call out Peach. I know Peach is not here. Peach brought me a messenger conversation. Next call, she's like, hey, that worked. I'm going to do it again. It's like, yes, do it again. I forgot who it was. I'm really going to leave you guys with this because I do have the lean on Laurel call next. So someone, I forget who it was. I don't know if she's here. Um, message on, on the last Ask Laurel. She was like in Messenger. She's like, well, I've been doing like, I want to capture their email so that I could do email marketing. I was like, try it without. Like just have the conversation. Literally, if you go look on the last Ask Laurel, you could see what she was doing. And then I was like, no, I wouldn't do that. She literally came back on the last Ask Laurel and she was like, hey, I did your thing. And guess what? I got on the call and I closed them. I was like, see, you didn't need an email address to do that. <laughs> Goodwill, right? Just keep this in mind. Goodwill. Asking people for an email address puts them on guard. Oh, they're, 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 you know, they're going to sell me something. But if you just have a conversation and help, be helpful. People want to talk to you. Oh, look, Lori says that was me, right, Lauren? Like it was, it, it probably felt good for you to have that conversation too without having to ask someone for something in return. Yeah, Sonia says, got a book, got a call book today, thanks to my videos. Yeah, I'm gonna challenge you guys, do it just 90 days. If you don't get results, you're gonna get the data that you're gonna see what's going wrong, probably a lot sooner than 90 days. 
anyway, hope you guys got a lot of value. I kind of kicked you in the pants today, but I think that was fun. That was fun, right? You guys like getting kicked in the pants, but um, happy new year to everybody. Continue to use the resources, continue to come to these calls, guys. We're going to crush it in 2023. If you guys want, ask me about Lean on Laurel. We'll see if I can get you in. I think we're full, but sometimes people leave. We'll get you in. We have a two-day ads accelerator for those of you guys who are like, oh, dragging your feet with getting the ads. Saturday and Sunday, it's a bonus to new members. I'm doing, I'm working two days with new members. We're going to get all their ads up in two days. We're going to write, write them together, shoot them together, and launch them together. So if you want an accelerated path, ask me about it. I think we might be able to make some accommodations. If not, we'll we'll try to get you in next round. Um, but anyway, you guys have a good day. I'll talk to you guys later.